in the first century of Christianity, were there any forgeries in the first century of, 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 of Christianity prior to canonization? Meaning, were there anything in the first century that was regarded as to be a forgery that was circulating around the Christians before canonization? And also, was it possible for forged texts to make their way into the canon? Is that possible that there actually occurred forged text in the first century, second century, third century that actually made its way in the first canon of um, the, uh, Christianity? As he mentioned, were there any forgeries in the first century? Um, and is it possible that forged text made its way into the canon? Um, I would um, challenge Akil to show me that any of the New Testament documents are forgeries. Um, I think that you can make a very good case um, that uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are written by the authors that, to whom they're traditionally ascribed. I think that the letters of Paul, you can make a good case, are uh, written by the, um, Paul, to whom they're traditionally ascribed. Um, I would invite him to read uh, William Paley's Hori Paulina, which makes a convincing argument for all the letters of Paul being written by um, uh, by Paul himself, and actually that uh, confirms the Acts of the Apostles as well and the historicity of that book. Um, so, um, since he's not pre presented any evidence uh, in our debate today that the New Testament does contain forgeries, there's nothing uh, for me to respond to there, but I would be happy to engage him in future concerning this topic. And let me show you real fast about the idea of, the, of it being changed. If you look at uh, Second uh, Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse two, I want to read this for you quickly to show you that there was things being changed or uh, fab fabrications in in, in, in in first century Christianity concerning the coming of the Lord, our, our Lord Jesus Christ, and our being gathered to Him. We ask you, brothers, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by some prophecy, reports, or letters supposed to have come from us, saying that the day of the Lord has already come. So that means that Paul is saying that there are people who are out there giving false prophecies. And also another place, you know, where, where Paul tells us about the, the, the false gospel, those who are preaching a false gospel. For if someone comes to you and preaches a Jesus other than the Jesus we preached, or if you receive a different spirit from the one you received, or a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it easily enough. But I do not think I am in the least inferior to those super apostles. So it's quite evident that in the very early times of Christianity, there were doctrines, there were false prophecies, there were false um, gospels that were circulating. Then, for instance, you said the letters of Paul are the letters of Paul. Who wrote Hebrews? It's almost by consensus that nobody actually knows who wrote Hebrews. So these are things that you have to deal with that we didn't get a chance to go into deeply, but I want to bring them now so people can see that it's not black and white, as if somehow the Bible is sitting here preserved and intact. That's not the case. The claim of the Quran is that it was revealed, but it has been changed in history. Best testimony to it. So as to who wrote Hebrews, uh, yes, we don't uh, know who wrote uh, Hebrews for certain, but nonetheless, the criteria of um, canonicity in the early church was um, apostolicity had to be written by an apostle or someone closely connected with an apostle had to be orthodox and it had to be um, a, a Catholicity as well, had to be universally accepted. And the, the book of Hebrews, I would argue, um, there's a good case can be made that was written by Clement of Rome and I can, I, I can depend that, but uh, Clement was connected with Paul, the apostle. 
Um, and it clearly was someone connected with Paul because of the literary similarities. Um, it even uses the same metaphor in, in Hebrews 5 as Paul uses in 1 Corinthians 3, suggesting that it was someone closely connected with, uh, with Paul. Also, who wrote Hebrews? Well, what does Hebrews say? Does it say something that contradicts the rest of the Bible? Uh, does it say something that has a contradiction in there? Uh, I, I believe who wrote it isn't as important as what it says. And if it's bearing truth, if it's truthful, it contains truth. Well, that's the most important thing. And I haven't found any contradiction in there uh, compare, comparing it to the rest of the New Testament or the Bible. Who wrote it isn't as important as what it says. Who wrote it isn't as important as what it says. So this is the reality. The Quran says the Bible was changed. It was corrupted. It was tampered with. History says so. Your scholars say so. What's the issue? It's almost a, a, a consensus that no one knows who wrote Hebrews. Do we know who wrote the book of Hebrews? No, we do not. Do we know who wrote the book of Hebrews? No, we do not. Who wrote Hebrews? Uh, yes, we don't uh, know who wrote uh, Hebrews for certain. Who wrote Hebrews? Uh, yes, we don't uh, know who wrote uh, Hebrews for certain. Who wrote it isn't as important as what it says. It's almost a, a, a consensus that no one knows who wrote Hebrews. Who wrote Hebrews? I don't know. Who wrote Hebrews? I don't know. Who wrote Hebrews? Don't know. وَإِنَّ مِنْهُمْ لَفَرِيقًا يَلْوُونَ أَلْسِنَتَهُمْ بِالْكِتَابِ لِتَحْسَبُوهُ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ لِتَحْسَبُوهُ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَمَا هُوَ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَيَقُولُونَ هُوَ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ وَمَا هُوَ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ وَيَقُولُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ أَشْهَادُ هُوَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَأَشْهَادُ أَنَّ محمد رسول الله